What's going on guys, it's another video here on Shogun FC and it's another PES 2017 related video. Today I'm going to take you through the sorts of players that I think are going to become a lot more important in PES 2017 compared to the current game. The first one I want to go through in this list is the offensive fullback. Because of the fast paced nature of PES 2016 and the fact that you know the ball went from the defence to the front line very very quickly usually in a matter of seconds that means that a lot of attacking fullbacks weren't really used to their full potential in the game particularly online those of us fortunate enough to have the likes of Jordi Alba Sergio Ramos who is still ranked as an offensive fullback by the way didn't really get to use them that often in that capacity occasionally you'd catch them overlapping or picking up the scraps of a failed attack, but that, that was about it really. This time round, there's a lot more opportunity for them to come into play. Over the course of this video, you're gonna hear me mention quite a lot about the fact that the game has slowed down, but it really does play into the way a lot of these players are gonna be able to improve in the coming game, and especially attacking fullbacks. The fact that the game plays a lot slower means that there's more time for them to get involved in the attack, enough time for the AI to decide to send your fullbacks bombing on or not, and vice versa for the computer to send theirs going forward as well. The fact that the average attacking time on this game, in my observation, took anywhere between two and three times longer than it would on PES 2016 means that there's plenty of time for you to decide what you're doing, switch out wide, switch back inside, and your fullbacks are gonna play a massive role in that, in being unpredictable whether you go centrally or go out wide. Having that option with your fullbacks bombing on down the wings is gonna be absolutely crucial to that. Not only that, but there's actually a tactical instruction specifically for overlapping fullbacks. I was lucky enough to go and test this out, and um, this is one of the first things that I cottoned on to is that when that is selected, indiscriminately, as soon as you're playing the ball forward, they start bombing on. And uh, I primarily use Arsenal. So obviously, Kieran Gibbs, Hector Bellerin, you just see them on the radar just absolutely blitzing forward. Now, I've spoken about this in a previous video, I believe, but um, that, that instruction isn't just as simple as them running forward while you're on the attack. Everyone else kind of gets a little bit more narrow, creates the space for them, so they can work as either dummy runners or be a legitimate part of the attack. And I feel like having offensive fullbacks on this game is going to be, is definitely going to be an additional string to your bow, more so than it was on PES 2016. Another group of players that are going to be incredibly useful in this game are midfielders. And in particular, in my opinion, box-to-box -box midfielders are going to become absolutely vital. Mostly due to the fact that over the top through balls don't work anywhere near as ridiculously well as they did in PES 2016. People are going to be using the midfield a lot more and you're going to want to have your midfielders involved and you're going to want quality midfielders this time. You can't bypass your midfield as well as you could in PES 2016 unless you're a really, really great passer. And even then, the best passers in the game are the midfielders, so you're going to have to use them one way or another. So this game's all going to be about controlling that midfield. The tactical hub of any football match is in the midfield. And being able to control that and dominate that is going to be absolutely key to success on this game. With that in mind, a box-to-box -box midfielder that can do a bit of everything, getting back, winning the ball, recycling possession, getting involved in the attack, they're going to be vital in any team that's looking to prosper, especially online. You know, to think about players like Pogba, Sissoko, Nangalan, those players with high stamina and a well-rounded skill set, they're going to be the players to look for. Another sort of player that's going to rise in importance in the new game are the goalkeepers, especially the ones with attribute cards, like defensive and offensive goalkeepers. So you're thinking of the likes of Manuel Neuer or Buffon. With the way that the goalkeepers weren't particularly great and weren't particularly intelligent in the last game, those cards didn't make much of a difference. The offensive cards did more so with Manuel Neuer. There was a bit more player ID on him and he would rush out at every opportunity. And the fact that goalkeepers weren't that great meant that you know it usually ended up being more of a calamity situation than something a bit more inspired. Think a bit less Manuel Neuer, a bit more Fabian Barthez, David James sort of situation. 
Unfortunately for a lot of people that meant it was, in, it was incredibly frustrating to use these sort of players. Uh, me myself, I sacked off Neuer for a long time and uh, ended up using Joe Hart who is easily one of the best goalkeepers on the game anyway. But uh, even more so with the fact that I couldn't rely on my offensive goalkeeper to be clever about it. That being said, goalkeepers are way, way, way better this time round. Um, there's a, a great variety to the way they play, the way they make saves, um, and they seem to read the game a little bit better as well in terms of positioning as well. So um, with that now in mind, these sorts of um, special goalkeepers are going to be a lot more useful and probably a bit more noticeable as well. The fact that people aren't going to be as great at lumping the ball over the top means that players like Neuer are going to be better suited to collecting the ones that go a bit too far and the fact that some do get timed well or come a bit too short means that if you've got a defensive goalkeeper in there you're not going to feel like you've been left in no man's land where they're not going to wash off the line and there's someone that's going to be forever putting them into that space behind your back line. All in all I'm looking forward to using a full spectrum of goalkeepers this time round. They're going to be a lot better and uh, I'm keen to see defensive goalkeepers really step up to the plate this time around. Next up in terms of improvement from PES 2016 to PES 2017, we're talking about target men, the big lads. From my experience of sitting down and playing with it for a good few hours, target men are absolutely important on this. Um, obviously the, the kind of front and central target man um, that we've been exposed to at the moment is Olivier Giroud playing both for France and Arsenal who are both teams on the demo version that we played um, and they'll probably be on the demo that you play as well I can't imagine the teams being much different but yeah Giroud he was really uh, he was incredible I'm not gonna lie he was absolutely incredible um, you got to use him to his strengths you weren't forced into trying to play forward as quickly as possible so he wasn't as redundant and obsolete as he was in PES 2016 the fact that you're going to have slower build ups, you're going to want to be bouncing things off to different players, holding the ball up a bit more, spotting more intelligent runs. Players like Giroud are going to be absolutely brilliant for that. Players like Mandzukic as well, while he's got a bit less ability than Giroud, still a fantastic target man. Those sorts of players are going to come in really, really handy. Um, long run of the days where you're reliant on someone like Aguero or Suarez. You can start to bring in your bigger, less mobile strikers and do a lot more with them and they'll be able, you'll be able to build your tactics around them. And for me, the players that are going to see the biggest improvement in this are the playmakers. Playmakers were really done a massive disservice um, in PES 2016 and you couldn't quite tell until PES 2017 how much of a gap there was in, uh, in the usefulness on a whole of the playmaker. Of course, when you're, getting the, when you're going direct all the time and you're going from back to front in a matter of seconds, the playmaker doesn't become as useful as they would be. Even Roberto Baggio, who when played in attacking midfield is the best playmaker on the game, even his impact is quite limited. It's a case of getting quickly, play a through ball, and uh, hope you can get an assist. This time around, it's, uh, it's a lot better. They've uh, obviously they've slowed the game down. They've improved the way that playmakers can move the ball about. There's new attributes as well, um, body control, that sort of thing. And the passing stats really do make a big difference this time around. So people with passing stats over 85 are gonna have a much wider range of passing, be able to do with a lot more accuracy, a lot more um, speed as well. Um, and a variety of the way that they you know, spread those passes being able to you know, put them direct, to be able to put them to the side of a player um, intelligently, that sort of thing. Those are the things that I noticed with players like Ozil, Cazorla, um, Payet as well. So yeah, the playmaker is going to be absolutely brilliant. And the fact that you'll be able to slow the game down and really choose your passes and you know, be able to control the ball in close areas to keep it away from your defender before threading the perfect pass through or you know, laying it off to somebody, that sort of thing. Those, that sort of playmaking element and the intelligence that goes into that is gonna be um, greatly rewarded by the way this game has been built. 
So that's it for this video, just a simple one, just to kind of give you a heads up into the sorts of players that you should be looking out for, um, both in Master League and my club, and just in general picking your teams for competitive events, if you're that way inclined. These are the sorts of players you want to be looking at. So your offensive fullbacks, your box-to-box -box midfielders, your target men, your offensive and defensive goalkeepers, and of course your playmakers. Honourable mention goes out to slightly slower defenders, not going to get caught out so much this time round. So players like Mertesacker, Godin and the like who are very very good defenders but not necessarily blessed with a hell of a lot of pace. They're going to perform a lot better this time round. So that's it for this video. If you found it at all helpful give it a thumbs up. Share it around the community. It's a resource for everybody. And I'll be back pretty soon with a video that I'm going to record straight after this one regarding my pick of the top 10 teams to use in PES 2017. You won't want to miss that one. So until next time, take care, peace.